God is good. All right, here we go. She's not wearing tits. I feel like lemon. Okay. <laughs> Come on, bitter. <laughs> <laughs> Are lemons bitter? No, they aren't. All right, sorry. Hello, welcome to IMHO. My name is Darby Lynn Cartwright, but my friends, well, they don't call me anything. They're dead. But I am joined today um, by one of my favorite Chicago performers that I've actually only seen, I think, perform a couple times, which is probably why they're one of my favorites, because <laughs> it's so small. Please welcome to your computers or your phones or your laptops, Kara Mel DeVille. How are you? Hi, ladies and gentlemen. I am blessed. It is my privilege to be here with you today. So um, thank you for having me. Thank you for acknowledging your privilege. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Did you say ladies and gentle them? Include everyone, you know, it's a spectrum. I love that. <laughs> oh, hang on, let me write that down. On behalf of IMHO and the fact that I was born in the early 80s, thank you so much for figuring out this snafu. We have been trying to set up this Zoom call for it like took 30 us minutes. A fortnight, a fortnight. And she was like, just give me the password. And I was like, I don't see it. Where are they? And she's like, I'll take over. So thank you. I truly, I, truly thank you. Now, so. there are a lot of people People who are seeing you for the first time. Yes, me and too, me too. I, I know, truly, this is your first night in drag. <laughs> Thank you so much. As Bambi calls them, um, they are, what are they? Oh, Jesus. Pandemic babies. Pandemic babies. You're a pandemic there we go. Baby. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're a pandemic baby. Can you tell us a little bit about, well, not, not me, I don't need to hear it, but will you tell them about you? Yeah, um, I moved to Chicago about a year and a half ago. I'm a Mississippi transplant like yourself. So I started there and then once I once I felt I was ready to take that next level, I moved up here and um, yeah, just hit the ground running. Literally did every competition just to put my foot yeah, in every put my foot in every door, get my name out there to every person and the opportunity that had come with that have just been a blessing and I'm so thankful for because of that. I'm featured on the Black Girl Magic cast here and there once in a while. Love that. I am a co-producer on the new podcast, The Black Tea with uh, Miss Toto, oh, yes, yes, yes. and it's hosted by Lucy and Bambi, so uh, live for that. Just, um, yeah, another opportunity that I was so excited and thankful to be a part of, so I'm just, I'm taking them when they're throwing them at me, you know. Hey, catch them when you can. Um, now, where in, where in Mississippi are you from? Um, Gulfport, Biloxi, it's like the little Vegas, Mississippi. Gulfport, Bel yeah. believe me, I'm well, <laughs> well aware. When I was in a private Southern Baptist college uh, just outside of Jackson, our formals were always in Gulfport. She said and, the formals. Um, yes. <laughs> our formals, bitch. I know what you're talking about, mama. <laughs> Needless to say, I had a great time, truly. Gulfport is, it's a, it's a jewel. It's a jewel of the Gulf. You brought up the black tea, it yes. just came out. So this is a good time to talk about it. Can you tell us a little bit about the black tea for the people who have don't have the internet, I guess? <laughs> yes, for those of you um, just now finding out what the internet is. Like me, <laughs> like literally when we set up this Today. meeting. So the black tea, I co-produced that with Miss Toto. It's hosted by legendary Lucy Stuhl and um, the wonderful, talented Bambi Banks. They're bringing together everyone in the Chicago scene to talk about issues in our community, to talk about the issues that uh, uh, brown and black people of color are experiencing. So they're just, um, you know, bringing everyone together to see what's the tea, the black tea, if you will, so. What's the black, there you go, that, <laughs> now I guess that makes sense. I listened to the first episode that just came out. Mm -hmm. It was with Zola. Zola and, and Joe Mama. Joe Mama. Yes. So it, basically, I know a lot of you watched the Chicago Black Drag Council Town Hall, mm -hmm. and it was, upsetting and it was powerful All of um, and All of and now this podcast is bringing a further like conversation out to the world yes. it's so exciting i would say lucy and bambi definitely had uh an idea and with the transition and the shifting of power i think it was a great decision on trey and lucky's we have to give this platform to us to again bring up the voices of those in our community who have not necessarily been heard yet and, and I don't know that I'm allowed to say this. I'll cut this out if I'm not allowed. But I may make a, an appearance on an episode later on. Yo, and, I, I heard. Am I allowed to say that? Am I allowed to say that? Uh, yeah. Just, well, I just want to speak, you know, because everyone hears the black tea and they go, what does the white girl think? So I just want to share so we brought my one experience. In. Yes. I need to share my experience. No, <laughs> these are the conversations that you need to have as uncomfortable as they might be as a white person who hasn't, fully 
dealt with the devil inside them. Mm -hmm. um, the least you can do when a black person asks you to show up is show up. And listen. Um, and listen. And uh, listen, I will tell you, Lucy was not easy on me on that episode. <laughs> um, in the town hall, you definitely put in the work, showed you were willing to put in the work and take the steps to get us to a place where everyone in our community feels heard, seen, and valued. So like, props to you for being the example, the white example in our community to like- See, oh my God, I'm, I'm <laughs> the green book of Boys Town. Thank I'm you. the green book. I am the white savior. I know this is really sad not to bring down the mood, but mm. have you seen that gift that's making its way around um, now that we have unfortunately lost Chadwick Boseman, mm -hmm. but it's when Green Book won Best Picture. Mm. Have you seen that? Then no, I have not. I thought you were about to say the one of Boseman, uh, Devane, Santana, and Kobe Bryant all holding hands walking away. When I saw that, I was like, oh. stop. I'm so thankful they included Chi Chi in that. Chi Chi is a star. A star. Um, someone was sharing on Twitter, because everyone's sharing, you know, their favorite memories and, and gifts of him, but it was when Green Book won Best Picture mm -hmm. and Chadwick turns around to Michael B. Jordan and he just goes, <laughs> just does this huge eye roll. It is so good. And Green Book, by the way, did kill my dog. I just need everyone to know. We were watching Green Book and she uh, suddenly started pooping and then we had to put her down. Damn, damn. I never finished that movie. I See? never finished that movie. I became it. I'll cut all this out. I'll cut all this out. Okay. That was adorable. Um, keep it, keep it. So how are you enjoying, it's coming to an end. How are you enjoying Canada's Drag Race? Uh, this has been like such a refreshing ride. It's, I think we are, we're not burnt out. We love seeing the regular seasons of Drag Race, but when it's like- You're not burnt out. You're not burnt out. <laughs> I'll speak I'm speaking for myself. For myself. Um, yes, yes. As a community, I think we are getting a little eh on the regular season. So a different season somewhere else is just so freshening. And seeing everyone's take on a first season, it's just like, okay, I see what y'all are doing. I see what y'all are doing. And y'all know what's up because y'all seen 13 seasons in the US, Thailand, UK, you know what's going on. That is one of my favorite things that Dita says. Dita Ritz, All Star Six. Uh, <laughs> she, on a, she did a review of Canada with Alexis and she mm -hmm. was like, they were talking about how like this first season, it's we hold drag to a higher standard, standard because it's been on for so long. And so they're just doing their first season. And so Alexis was like trying to give them that benefit of the doubt. Benefit of the doubt, 100%. And then, but then Dita goes, yeah, but they've watched 12 years of Drag Race. And I was like, you're not wrong. You're <laughs> not wrong. I'm also, I am, I see both sides of that argument. Cause yes, you've seen yes. all the seasons and I see them putting that effort. I see like they brought this for the runway or they brought this for that challenge. And then sometimes I'm like, girl, that's the bar look. You know, you know. <laughs> oh, wait until we get to this ball. I have so yeah, many things yeah. to say. <laughs> but on, so to preface that, because there has been a lot of, um, what's the right word? Fucked up uh, <laughs> fandom shit this week. Very much. Um, so again, I just want to remind you where we are at IMHO. We are silly drag queens talking about a TV show. We love every single one of them. We are happy that every single one of them had this opportunity. Of course. We're commenting on what we're seeing on TV. Mm -hmm. It's not that serious. It's not that real, you know? <laughs> this isn't the real world. In Have you my... seen my house? <laughs> yes, it, it, it has two <laughs> shelves. It has some dolls on it. it and oh yeah, that's quick. what you could see. <laughs> I should show you this. Uh, a friend of mine. Is it a Funko Pop? Uh, it's a Funko Pop. It was of Angela ah! Lansbury and Murder, She Wrote. And yes! he bought it and he turned it into Derek Barry as the Tin Man. <laughs> There's a him here. There's it. a him here. There's a him here. Yeah. Uh, my friend Raphael is, um, he's trouble. Well, then let's get into this episode because I'm sure we'll like, I'm sure something will spark a conversation. We'll end up talking about Mississippi and just how we'll never go back. <laughs> I will never uh, go. Oh, you beat me to it. <laughs> never. <girl. laughs> My sister lives in Mississippi. She lives in uh, outside Jackson. Uh -huh. And she just, she had a, she just had a baby. Oh, just yes. had a baby a year and a half ago. Okay. And she's like, it's do you think now. you'll ever come see my baby? And I was like, not as long as she's in Mississippi. <laughs> right. Fuck off. I'll FaceTime the bitch. I'll Please. buy her a present. No, going back after a year was like, okay, 
I remember where I grew up. I don't want to remember where I grew up. This was lovely. Yeah. Bye, y'all. <laughs> Mississippi is a different. It's a different. You've got you've got the internet. Google it. It's it's a different place. Learn it's, about it's it. Hard. Let's get into Drag Race. So we start out. Lemon is gone. Ugh, just uh, that shade of Lemon, wind. who barely survived the first lip sync, and then soared in the competition. Very consistent. How did you feel? Very consistent on a like upward trajectory for her Drag Race narrative. For that mm -hmm. final, for her makeover runway. Uh, yeah, I thought. Again, Lime looked a little old and Rita knew Alanis Morissette. I, I, I was born in the 90s. I grew up on Alanis Morissette. I don't think Lemon could embody the emotion behind that song. She knows it, but she don't know it. Yeah. R Rita ate I also, I just want to make it clear, like I'm secure enough in my age. I was not offended by the fact that you just dropped that you were born in the 90s in the middle of that <laughs> statement. That didn't offend me. I want you to know I feel comfortable. I'm glad you're not offended. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, Lemon has, she's lip synced it a couple times now. Mm -hmm, it's, mm -hmm. if you lip sync, you know, and Rita has had such success on the show, whether or not you agree with it, it's happened. I very think true. that was a clear, like, it was her time. It was, yes, very much so. We're wiping the lipstick off. We are on top four. Baby. So they all go over to the couch because producer said, you can't take your drag off yet. You have to talk more shit on the couch. Be messy. And be messy. <laughs> and we find, well, and then Rita just looked at the camera. She goes, I already am. Um, and then, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. We love Rita, but we get to the top four and they find out someone has won three challenges. Someone has won two. Someone has won one. Someone has won none. none. So we have a three, two, one, zero. That is Canadian math. <laughs> I love it. Don't you know? <laughs> uh, don't you know? Oops. Wait, is that one? Oops. No, I just didn't know. No, I really did. No, no, no. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's the A's, don't you know, and a boot. It. That's very good. I mean, girl, the borders are closed. We cannot go to Canada. They won't let us in. Please so take me. I think they're safe. I think they're safe from us. You know, Scarlet Bobo is the zero wins. Mm -hmm. She keeps saying, though, she's never been in the bottom two. She's never been like on a losing team. I mean, that's something. She she had a um a very safe, high placing run. She may mm -hmm. have came close to the bottom, but yeah, never fell directly towards the bottom. So I mean, I think that's something to say because if she does make it to this the top three, like baby, we haven't seen anything Scarlett's done performance wise. So like that's again, we, we had that same instance with Sasha where she won one or two. And then by the finale time, we hadn't seen her perform. So it was like, once it comes time for that, we're gonna be blown away by Scarlett, I think. Well, it's very similar because Bianca Del Rio was never in the bottom two. Oh wait, no, they didn't have to do a lip sync back then. She just got on stage and told jokes and she won. So then we go to the next day. Okay, I have to be honest with you. Tell me. This was four people in an hour and a half show where they started with like 12. Filling the time with only four people is difficult. It's like, hey, so, what story have we not talked about yet? Um, do you have any... Who has more trauma? Who has more trauma? You got trauma? <laughs> right. Anybody else in your family die? Do you want to double check on Facebook? <laughs> the best part about the next day, as far as I'm concerned, is Stacey McKenzie, our Ooh. goddess, our love. Everybody. She walks in with the most incredible... <laughs> I mean, the Pony. ponytail and that if I was, body. If I was Brooklyn, I would be mad that they booked me with a, a supermodel at this point. Like, An actual supermodel. Thank you. <laughs> she says it That's... later and I and I like, I spit my drink out. She's like, I'm a model. I don't make the clothes I wear. And I said, bitch. I wear them. Yeah. Bitch. She walked in and I was like, oh my God, she looks so good. Every time. And then as she's talking to the queens, they show a shot from behind and you see the back of her body. <sighs> Yes. Oh, it sounded like her. That's her speaking voice. <laughs> I give her the show. I know that you're trying to do something new. Mm -hmm. Make her the host. It, this, Are you kidding you me? You know, having having the three hosts and having all the special guest hosts, maybe it was like a trial and error. Like, Or maybe it was like a lot of error. Maybe not as much trial. We get a special guest. I mean, thank God I was sitting down. It's Sabrina Jalice, the famous comedy writer that lives in LA. Uh, how did she clear her schedule how with such I, last That's what I'm last saying. Minute? How have I not heard of her? I was just like, <laughs> all the way I, from LA. <laughs> all the way from LA, that's what killed me. She's like, I am Canadian, but let me tell you about LA. And I was like, is this Canada's drag race? Yes. Come on. Yeah. Well, 
but I had to put her in like a, something I understood. Famous comedy writer. So it's like if Amy Poehler or Tina Fey like wandered in the room. That, that like, yeah, My Rudolph, Margaret Show, those are my famous but, comedy exactly. writers. And not to discredit her, I just haven't heard of her. So I was like, okay, this she's a Canada native. That's why. And you know, that's something to say. You, at least you're not American. That's cool. T. We wish, we wish. <laughs> Take me with you. So the whole mini challenge is that they're gonna have to sing the Canadian national anthem. <laughs> Fun twist. I don't know if you saw this coming. I, uh, I did not see This mini challenge, no, not at all. Who could? This mini challenge was like an hour long. Again, I have to was, do my Canadian math, but that sounds right to me. This was very much, like you said, they had space to fill. So they're like, we're gonna show you learning the lyrics. We're gonna show you going to the studio, recording your lyrics. We're gonna show you doing bad singing the lyrics. 100%, there's gonna be costume changes. No, but I just felt like Sabrina, I actually really enjoyed her direction. She was yes. really funny, she was really dry, but there was so much time between each joke. <laughs> and then you would just see like, was it funny? Maybe the first couple lines and then you're just like, Ugh. yeah, you, you cringe because you're like, I have to sit through it because there's only four contestants. But girl, think about the Canadian people watching that. They had to stand and salute that entire segment. <laughs> Can you imagine how tired? At home, just standing and saluting the whole time. I don't know their salutes, I don't, I don't know. As we all predicted, Rita won, I guess. Mm -hmm. She won a gift certificate to Dirt Squirrel. Have you heard of Dirt Squirrel? They make jocks and like under undergarments for the gents, correct. They're okay. very into fan culture. They were a big, I think they were a big sponsor of Dragula. Yes. And because I remember the first time I heard Dirt Squirrel. What? What is that name? I just thought Dirt of something that just burrow that buries in a butthole. That's the first thing that comes to my mind is butt burning. Right? So I never had quite a name for what Curtis is. He's a dirt squirrel. <laughs> He's a dirt squirrel. Am I the mud hole? I'm the mud hole. I mean, or the dude squirrels. We've lost burry we've lost mud? all of our viewers. All of our viewers are gone. A thousand dollars worth of underwear. So go for it, Rita. So we find out that the the they, the big challenge, the main challenge, sorry, I had a stroke. The main it's challenge is the, the ball. snowball. Yes. The snowball. And I just, I love punny little challenge titles and stuff like that. A snowball, yes, Canada is very icy, wintry, and the ball challenge, why not make it a snowball? And it's also like the double entendre with the sexual stuff. So I'm like, come on. Sexual stuff? What's a sexual snowball? Um, What's her name? Ruth, not Ruth, uh, the, the lady who does the sex talk. What is her name? Oh. I know exactly who you're talking about. Dr. Phil. Yes, she was the one yes. who said. <laughs> the one on oxygen. Yes, the snowballs yes, yes, yes. when, yeah, when someone, you know, does what they do and then you throw it back at them. <gasps> Through saliva. I like that. Yeah. That's funny. That's I figured funny. someone would incorporate that, but I'm like, they can't do that on Canada. However, their censorship does allow them for a little more. So I was hoping. I mean, the cock destroyers have made appearances on there. I'm sure you could snowball. Somebody. There are three categories. There is executive holiday party realness mm -hmm. that they brought from home. Mm -hmm. Icy walk of shame brought from home. And then the ice queen eleganza, which they have to make. Make there. Now, do you make clothes? Um, I can make ramen. I can make cereal. I can make a decision, but clothes mm -hmm. I cannot make. I know how to work a sewing machine. I that think part. I could make a tube dress. I wouldn't and make, then just glue stuff. I would make exactly what Michelle hates. A bodysuit with everything glued on it. But I would know how to sell it. So that's the thing. I think people have gotten away with the bodysuit, which we will discuss a little later. But um, mm -hmm. it's, just, it's just how you how you embellish, style it, and you know, sell it. Well, that was a moment because IMHO is unapologetically a pre and Jimbo fan club. And so this Honestly. episode, pre was like, yeah, I'm just gonna glue shit to this corset. And there was a moment where like my heart sank to my dirt squirrel. We, I was like, oh, we all no. Like, get out the mud uh, hole. While she's gluing shit to a corset, one of my favorite moments of the episode was when Rita asked her like, have you ever been to this this ski party? No, wait, it was Jimbo. So it was like, have you Jimbo, ever been to yes. a ski party? Priyanka's like, when was the last time you saw a POC at the uh, ski hill, bitch? Read, read. Jimbo's response was like, it's the best party. It's great. <laughs> Oh God, no, no, no. no. Is but I don't actually know what a ski party is. Are, 
do you happen to? No, so I I, I am white, um, but we were lower middle class. Mm -hmm. um, so we would get a beach trip when the timeshare came up. Not the timeshare, uh, but, <laughs> but skiing, <laughs> skiing just wasn't for us. Another moment, which we kind of touched on, Scarlett can't so, so she's kind of freaking out. So Jimbo tries to explain to Scarlett, in order to make the cape, there are four parts. Mm -hmm. And she goes, but I only have one piece of fur. And she goes, yeah, you're gonna cut it into four parts. And she's like, but I, I only need one cape. And she's like, yeah, there are four parts. Scarlet. She's like, sorry, I've won zero challenges. My <laughs> math only goes up to zero. I can't, I don't know what four is. It's the Mississippi math, mom. Stacy comes back into the room, still looking gorgeous. She's gonna do the walk around, thank yes. God. There wasn't a lot that really stuck out to me, except for the fact that Rita said that Stacy helped her walk better and walk with confidence. So now she keeps her shoulders back and thinks about hot dogs. <laughs> okay, the hot dogs I see on her face every time she's on the runway. The improvement in walking I don't see. So I'm no. a little confused what Rita was going for. Cause I feel like genuinely the only people that took and applied Stacy's critiques from the, the runway aspect of things was um, Jimbo. I saw a change in that. Yeah. Alona, um, rest in peace. Sorry, you're not there no more. Everyone else, like for me, they've been consistent with how they present themselves on the runway. I love a brand. I love that these girls get on TV and they go, oh, that was a moment. I'm gonna make that a t-shirt when mm -hmm. I get announced. And so I think Rita's trying to make hot dog happen. <laughs> it's um, too late. That episode. Yeah. Happened. Well, and is it is it like this French Canadian kind of elegant drag queen is like, I love hot dogs. It's like, do you? Do <laughs> if that you wasn't Rita, dogs? if that was not Rita down, I'm like, okay. <laughs> you IMA show girls have these accents like spot on. I'm, I'm impressed. Oh, I've, I've had to work on it. Once Chan came out with sugar cane, it was over. No, so I was like, shit. Her, her sugar cane and um, one of the boulets. The big boulet. Yes, I'm like, yeah. baby, that is dead on. Yeah. And now we have Rita Baga. This is a whole cast. Y'all need to do this show. We're we're really <laughs> coming through. We're, we're bringing it together. Now, if you're on the runway and you need to walk with confidence and you have to think of something you love that is a food, what what food is going to make you walk proud and horny, I assume? Huh. Tacos. Hard or soft. Hard or soft? Mm -hmm. equal you really don't lean towards one? No, equal opportunity taco employer here. I enjoy um, the crunchiness of the hard taco. I enjoy the... Um, the softness of the soft The softness taco. of the soft taco. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I love how crunchy the crunchy taco is, and I love how soft the soft one is. I just love when the adjectives match. <laughs> Isn't it great? <laughs> Mine would be chip and dip, chip any and kind. Dip. I love chip and dip. Salsa, I love chip and dip. Salsa, guacamole, I love... ranch dip. Uh, cheese dip, ranch cheese dip, dip, French onion. All of it. I'm in. I just, I, what is that about? What is that? You're uh, I'm a, you're, there's, you're there's some trauma in my dip. past. Heck, do you know how to do a dip? Well, I put my hand upon uh, the hip. my hip. <laughs> And then when I, I dip, I don't dip, Okay. Uh, I quit. Stacy makes the announcement that Michelle Visage is coming. The thing that struck me was their reaction was like, oh my God, can you believe it? And they were jumping up and down. And it was like they were saying, wow, she's from real drag race. <laughs> like I was like, no. You know what I mean? When you say it like, like that, yes. You are the top four of For Canada's real. Drag Race. First For season of Canada. Like, you are the top four. Mm -hmm. And now you're like, <gasps> Michelle's here. Which I see because I've been saying all season that I think the girls are too friendly with Brooklyn. I think they treat the judges like shit. <laughs> like, I don't think that they respect them. They were, okay, and hierarchy. They respect Stacy. They uh, respect mm -hmm. Brooklyn, but they will read her for filth. They don't respect Jeffrey. <laughs> no. And that's T. We have, well, yeah, we'll talk about that. We, there's, there's, we've got some talking points, but I just, it struck me because I was like, oh, so you're not invested in this show. So should we, are we getting on board? Should we be invested? So we go to the next day, they're putting their makeup on, they're, I like to call it trauma talk. Hey, who still has some issues they need to work out on international television? There is a sweet moment. Rita does talk about her dad and says that her dad is her number one fan mm -hmm. and that he's a very traditional, like he's a construction, he owns a construction site or something. Yes. That's so 
sweet. Yeah, to have, um, I guess, a father be supportive of a LGBTQIA plus kid, yes, it's becoming more um, acceptable, normal, but have, hearing someone say, it was easy for me and my family's been supportive, it gives you that just like, oh, I'm glad you made it through that part of your life and I'm glad it worked out that way. Where yeah. That's not everyone's case, so it's it's good to hear a positive uh, outcome of well, we're. We're from the South, so it was very easy for us. Like, uh, super duper easy, <laughs> couldn't, my dad kept trying to set me up with all these dudes, and I was like, hang on, uh, let me return from Bible study. Was it really that easy for you? No. Okay, I was like. I haven't like, talked to my dad in years. Did, Are you kidding? Darby, I was about to say, baby. Okay, so my parents, <laughs> they knew, they knew, but I, well, I, yeah, I, I tried I, to keep. I've met you, yeah, I've met you. <laughs> How could you not? So they tried to like, coerced me out, but I wasn't ready. You're, you're ready when you're ready. And then a uh, year after I moved out, when I finally came out to friends, family, and everyone, they are just like, about damn time. I was like, thanks. Really? Thanks. Yeah. Are you close to your parents? Um, My father, yeah, we have a we have a relationship. It's just, he lives in the South, I live up here, but we still, yeah. we keep up. We have our every two week monthly call. That's nice. Mm -hmm. My dad and I talk every five years. Oh. Um, I think we're coming up on year five. So I, was, I have to, let me make some notes. I was gonna say, year this. five, isn't that the, um, you have to get him like a wood gift or something? <laughs> yeah, it's our anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> the last time we talked, it's paper. Then we also get Scarlett's mom is her best friend, yes. which was super sweet to hear. Of that. course, there was a little bit of trauma. She talks about how her stepfather was an abusive alcoholic mm -hmm. and how she just felt like she always wanted to help her mom, but she couldn't. It makes me nervous to hear that from Scarlett because usually when people share their deepest, darkest, traumatic secrets while putting on makeup, it means they're going home. Usually. Like it means that they're in trouble, mm -hmm. right? That's usually the and format. I was, the format, right? But. Scarlett's never been in the bottom. Mm -mm. So she hasn't had to use her trauma talk yet. And this is the last episode before the finale. So they were like, go ahead and get it out. Just get it. <laughs> you know that like horrible fucked up thing you said in your audition tape? Say that again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I adore Scarlett and I don't, I don't like to see anyone cry, but especially people I actually give a shit about. So or I don't want to, I don't like seeing people cry and their face doesn't move. That's what I don't like. And I, I enjoy I the emotion. Face. I love her face. <laughs> I love her face. No, she's gorgeous. When they were cutting back to pictures of her, like clearly before she had the work done, Prior I was to. like, I, I prefer it. I love it. I love it. I she love did it. it right. She did it how it was meant to be done. There I'll we go. There we go. I love it. I love it. So then they're asking, like, has anyone ever walked in a ball before? Rita says that she actually has. She walked in a winter ball and she won Best Dress. I was, okay. Go on this journey with me. Go on this journey with me. <laughs> so she me says me. that, right? Mm -hmm. She says, yes, I've been in a ball, I won. And then she says, balls are where queer people of color reclaim signifiers of white privilege. And she is helping to educate the audience about how this is for queer people of color and this mm -hmm. is to uplift them. And then she's like, I won. <laughs> My white ass won best dress. I think she did leave out saying um, trans people of color because correct that is the ballroom correct. scene. So I mean, True. yes, it's, I'm glad a white cis person. I don't know actually. I don't know how Rita identifies, but a cis passing person. I'm glad they won and she lived her fantasy and she probably did what she needed to that night. Absolutely, and I'm not uh, clearly. I don't know the realm of it. I'm not saying she shouldn't win, but mm -hmm. it was just funny to me. She's like, "Yes, I won. Yeah. I walked in the ball. I won." And then she's like, "It's for queer people of color to really like take back the power." And but I, was I like, won. Did you? <laughs> yeah, did you go with your trophy? When I started drag a thousand years ago, you were five. Uh, yeah, um, I was just uh, dropped into the US <laughs> at that time. Yeah. Exactly. It was mostly like cis gay men who didn't know the history of everything. We just took the culture and didn't acknowledge it. And then yep. Paris is Burning kind of made a resurgence as drag started to become more mainstream. mainstream. And it started to be talked about, but in the recent history, like Legendary has really put it on the map. Ugh. There's a recognition and a fire to recognize the black trans people who gave us everything that we have. Because that, that was another thing. I'm sorry, go ahead. Babe. No, but I was going to say, I think that's that's very much it right now. It's just the recognition. People are just finally, they're doing their, they're doing their research and they're like, oh, 
these white people did not start it. It was actually these black trans people of color who originated it and brought it to the forefront. So, I mean, the recognition, I think, is what people need and I'm glad they are getting it now. It kind of builds in the conversation. So like recently I've seen Marsha P. Johnson, they're wanting to build a memorial. They're having all of these marches in her honor. And someone had tweeted out like, you recognize though that the people that are calling for all of this are the same cis gay white men who villainized her when she was trying to make a difference. So I think that's just important to remember. Fellow white people, we can absolutely pay tribute to the people who made a difference, but we also need to recognize where our culture, where we come from, really hindered that. Very and much. so it was nice to see the drag queen say, this language is from ballroom, this word is from ballroom, mm -hmm. this word is from ballroom, because it's something that people who watch Drag Race only associate with, with Drag Race. Laganja Estranja. Well, yes. yes, and that too. But there needs to be a recognition of like, we are so honored to be able to pay tribute with these words, or I don't feel comfortable using those words as we try and give more credit where it's needed. Where it's you know, they're just, there's a second part of the conversation that I think is happening on local levels in certain areas, but I want to hear the second part too. I feel like with the way Drag Race is going and what people are asking of Drag Race to represent and to be just overall inclusive, that time will come. However, I yeah. don't say we need to wait on Drag Race to do that. Anyone can do it. I think that has the voice and the platform to do so. We're just waiting on it. Or some have. We're just waiting for the next person to just be that catapult to get it where it needs to be. You know what I'm saying? Lucy's tool. Yes, I Very do. much. Okay. I mean... We're not lying. The final little thing before we get to the runway is okay. Jimbo is doing her makeup and Jimbo realizes she hates her makeup. It's not what she wanted. She feels hideous. We also feel the same way, Jimbo. Okay, so <laughs> we've said this all season. Jimbo stan. Jimbo stan, stan, stan. Mm -hmm. But Jimbo's a clown. She's a character. And I don't think she's invested in the drag makeup like drag queens are who, who, cause like my identity is a drag queen who does comedy. Her identity is, I'm a comedian who, who does, does drag. drag. So yeah, when she was like, I hate it. I was like, it looks like every other time you've done your makeup. <gasps> like, what do you hate? Yeah. What do you hate? Yeah. I love Jimbo, do not get me wrong. I tweeted literally when they revealed the cast, I said, Bobo, Pre, Jimbo, and Rita were the top four. And I saw what Jimbo could do. Okay, agreed. They are not invested in the makeup, but they're invested in the performance and the costume. Correct. I feel like maybe time just got away from them and top four is not the time for time to get away from you. Especially when Michelle Visage is making Thank her way to the you. stage. It's just like, because mm. no one will let that makeup slide if Michelle, Mis Michelle Visage is there. I'm sorry, no. it's just not gonna happen. So let's take it to the runway, runway, run, 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 runway. The realness. Um, the judges come out. Jeffrey looks fine. Brooklyn looks good. Stacy looks amazing. Supreme. That red coat. Fire. The, her her legs. The fact that she did her hair just like Adele. It was just. <laughs> it was nice. It was nice to see that. <laughs> That's a discussion, Girl. Mama. That is another discussion. That is a, that's, yes. But did you notice the, the judges, they very went for, very much went for a, a primary color scheme. And I clocked that mm -hmm. when they all were all together. I was like, okay, come on, red, yellow, blue. They wanted to be colorful because they knew Michelle Visage would come in in the black and she'd have to be in charge. <laughs> and so Michelle Visage, all like three foot two of her, mm -hmm. walks down the runway. And what? I love, I love. I hate and I love Michelle Visage. It's, like, very, I, it's very that relationship. It was refreshing as a, a stupid American Drag Race fan mm -hmm. to see part of what I know on that stage. Yeah, it gave familiar, familiar it, it made us feel at home watching, watching Michelle walk on the runway at Canada's Drag Race. I also felt the familiarity. Familiarity. <laughs> she raises the bar a little when it comes to the judging because it's the first season, okay? And these judges are just trying to fall into the category they feel like they're supposed to, you know? Okay, on um, that, I feel like Jeffrey yeah. definitely wanted to fall into RuPaul's role, workroom-wise. Brooklyn, I think she wanted to fall into Ru's role runway-wise, however, wanted to be relatable because she's like, I've also been through this. 
And Stacy, yeah. it was just like, Stacy, we need a, we need a third person to mix this up and just give some fierceness. And Stacy yeah. delivered, delivered, delivered. I know there's a lot of hate for Jeffrey online, um, which it, it's a TV show. Mm -hmm. Anyone that takes it any more seriously than that and starts really harassing people online, you can go fuck yourself. Mm -hmm. Check your credentials. Um, we're talking to you, 12 year old white girl from Maryland. I think Jeffrey this season was playing a character and I think he was saying things he thought he had to say. Very much. So I think it's safe, I think it's okay. Well, I'll tell you what's okay. I think it's okay to say like, I don't like the character choice he made. I don't hate Jeffrey, I hate no. the character that he What he was, playing. yeah, what he was trying to push in front of the camera, It's it seemed forced. It didn't seem natural. And that was it for me. But I think, I think it's worth a second shot. Oh, of course, like I of think, course. Do I think there needs to be some maybe like switch around and maybe make Stacy the, you know, the full-time host? Sure. Mm -hmm. But I'd like to see now that they've gotten this feedback and now that Jeffrey's been like bullied by teenagers, <laughs> I would just like to see what they do next season. Well, I mean, they definitely, they gave Michelle some tips and critiques from her first season till when she starts, season three or four. I don't know. One of those seasons she started. Um, mm -hmm. And I found out recently that um, they told her she cannot wear like hair that is so big. Her shoulders have to be a certain uh, width and or height because they cannot be in Rue's frame. And I'm pretty sure they've also addressed Michelle on how she critiques people on the runway. Producers and other individuals close to Jeffrey will give him these critiques, but what he's getting online from everyone is a little unfair given the critiques we've heard from other people before. And I'll just leave Correct. it at that. He's doing a job. That was it. He's doing a job. He is getting paid. Let him figure it out. Let him. That's all. We have a thousand looks to go through. Mm -hmm. So executive realness, Jimbo comes out. She's got on the gold blazer with the big shoulder pads to reveal into slutty elf or Santa or whatever. Mm -hmm. What did you think? I was here for the gold wrap coat trench thing. Same. When she opened it, I was like, this is Derek Berry from their runway where they had to create shit out of scratch. Cause Derek Berry literally had the same thing, but mm -hmm. had some, <laughs> but literally had uh, uh, probably the same hair, but something else in the hair. I was let down by Jimbo on that. The body was right, the hair was not, and the reveal was not. Her body is always right, and I love that she has like a slutty kind of go-to character. I think that's yes. so funny to me. And she, she I love it. sticks with it and delivers with it every time. And the blazer I would wear a thousand times, I loved it. Same. Love, love, love. Rita, she comes out in like a purple jacket and some Party City glasses. She takes a lemon out of her tit at one point and blows on it. Which I, um, I, was an attempt at shade, but I don't think it read well. Well, I don't know. I, you know, now I haven't been in the business world in a while due to, you know, the courts, but the last <laughs> time I was in an office building, I don't remember seeing the executives, you know, taking a lemon out of their tit. There was that uh, one I time. Get, there was that one time. Oh. Yeah, it was, yes. the, it was, the, it was the retreat and lemons mm -hmm. were everywhere, but. We choose not well, to. Well, that's like, that's, that's team building. That's <laughs> team building exercise, yeah. Um, Rita looked like she was going to a Halloween party. It Very was so much. simple. It was so. Nail on it, the head, it, no extra pizzazz. It looked like a last minute thing. It mm -hmm. looked like, cause you know, they get a list of looks yes. and it includes runway and challenges. It looked like she thought that was gonna be an acting challenge. I, I would have thought, you know what? If they told me executive realness, given my experience with American Drag Race, I definitely would have either thought it would have been the beginning of a ball or an acting challenge. But the yeah. look looked like she was ready for an acting challenge, not the beginning of a ball. Then we had Priyanka. She came out mm -hmm. as the drunk lady from HR. She sold that look. Cause That's, when she, she ate we saw up. her putting that, that suit on, or that suit, that <laughs> skirt on while they were getting ready. They mm -hmm. cut to her and we got to see her put it on. And I was like, ugh. What Gross. is that? <laughs> and then she came out and I was like, full look, there we go. This is what I wanted there to we see. Go. I feel like Priyanka, in addition to maybe Scarlett and Jimbo, know how to really sell what they're wearing on the runway or give a character yes. to what they're doing on the runway. And I'm just like, good job Priyanka. Cause you knew- She gives a character, but she also kind of plays herself in every character. There's always a little bit of Priyanka in it and I don't hate it. 
Yes. I like it. I feel like she knew where her shortcoming was and she made up for it with this. Then finally we have Scarlet Bobo. She came out in like a newspaper suit and then opened up. She had that like kind of jewel mm -hmm, mm -hmm. gold bodysuit. I loved it. I thought it was, it was very like, okay, yes, we work together. I'm gonna bring my office outfit that I don't really wear too often and maybe just it up mm -hmm. a little bit. She did look like the star of the office party. I liked it. You know, was it Christmassy? Did it read like over the top, like Christmas party? No, but I didn't care about it. No, it didn't. I liked it. Stuff like that would still go over in the Christmas environment. And everyone's drunk and, you know, making copies of their tips. Mm -hmm. so they don't know what's going on. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Everything goes over. Two eggnogs um, in, we're not even worried about it. Then we go into the icy walk of shame. Now, before we get into the looks, have you ever had an icy walk of shame? Um, I've had one walk of shame. I just remember waking up in my car. Okay, I left the place, got home, and I fell asleep in my car for two hours, woke up, and I was just like, this happened. Looked around, no one was at my apartment. I was like, <laughs> was it a commute? Maybe like a five minute commute. I could have walked, it would have been 15 minutes, but I was like, I'll take the car. I'm feeling spicy. <sighs> the youth, <laughs> I worry about you. I worry about you. I've had plenty of walks of shame in Chicago weather. And I just have to say, I didn't look like any of these ladies. The first one is Jimbo. She came out in that like fur coat and then she had the, the rainbow kind of and then she had like the platform. I immediately and then she had toilet paper. I immediately said Tara Reed, welcome back. I was so happy <sighs> to see her. <laughs> uh. No, it was very much um bimbo girl who just left the pool party, I feel like, not icy walk home. The fur coat is what she chose to make it icy, if you will. I was here for this look for Jimbo. I was. Yeah, I liked it, but I it was fine. Oh fine. Like, it was fine. That's fine. Then we go to Rita. Again, it is a costume for a Halloween party. She is in a windsuit. She's dr drawn like a loser on her forehead because she fell asleep at the party. <laughs> Weren't you waiting for there to be a reveal or for her to like shit out a turkey or something? Like, I, I just, I, there had to be something. I was waiting for her to come out of the tracksuit. It took me back to the like 90s, early 2000s of the moms who were there supporting their kids do all the sports. So I was just like, please take this off. And then the, yeah. the nasty little mustache eyebrow combo was like, Okay, Rita. I immediately I, thought though, how is she gonna fix this for the next look? But she somehow did that. Michelle even said like in the judging about this look, she was like, yeah, I mean, I would go see this show. I would see this character in a show, but is it a runway look on Drag Race? No. no. Then we had Priyanka. She came out in that like parka that she turned into like a Canadian, I don't know. She had the big like maple leaf and then she had like with this maple leaf sock top. heels. She stole that from Anastasia. I'm, you can't tell me otherwise. That My first time seeing that was when she did it and when I saw her hair, I was like, stolen. But I'm also gonna do it, so stolen. But it looked good. It looked yeah, so I good. Yeah, <laughs> I was on board. Priyanka, I don't know if she's gonna lip sync tonight because this I, is two for two. She was on it. And I don't know if it was the combination of the hair or just like something on the makeup was like a little drooly or like looked like it was dripping. I was just like, you look like you just woke up and are stumbling home. Come yeah. <laughs> then we had Scarlett. Bobo. Scarlett Bobo. She came out in her Jan cosplay <laughs> with like the rubber icicles. <laughs> okay, you're the fourth person said... I heard say the Jan, the Jan oh, really? icicles. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, but then she said, you know what? This is probably enough. And then she bought like little leg warmers. Little on the and yes. called it a day. Did she just pull that out of her carry-on? Where have those been? Those were definitely but she separate looked gorgeous. pieces. Yes, they were separate pieces that you can wear with anything, mix and match, but she put them together stylistically very well. I mean, spoiler alert, this was her week. It this was. This was just, the every piece, look she came in, I was like, Pinks and blues go together. I see it in your eyes and your hair, mama. She knew what was up. So then we get into what they made. So the Ice Queen Eleganza. <laughs> First up, we had Jimbo. Um, hold on, let me, hold on. Yeah. Um, hold on. Michelle said, why is your face so white? Did you do that on purpose? <laughs> We've been saying this all all 2020, it seems like. <laughs> Why is your face so <laughs> <laughs> There were elements there. It wasn't horrible. It did kind of look like a look she brought from home, but there was 
This is eleganza. It was just, it was so messy. It wasn't eleganza. It was. It wasn't eleganza. It was no. whatever the next level below that was. That's what it was. It was okay. like a Marshalls, TJ Maxx. <laughs> Ross. So I feel like Jimbo was being slightly shady now that I've seen this look. Um, Cause you know, they film the season and then they come back and do the meet the queens and their their cast photo if you will did yeah. you notice this look almost parallels jimbo's uh meet the queens look oh it does i feel like jimbo was like okay y'all sent me home on this i'm gonna wear it for the cast reveal boom same hat same nasty hair the makeup's different but yeah costume and all that yeah I, and i will say i didn't i didn't like her cast reveal photo either so there you go. There, I, you're right. I feel That's like she tried way. to elevate it and just, eh. And I just want to say this so we keep it in mind. So Jimbo came out first and her look that she made, she tripped on her, her jacket. Mm -hmm. That'll come back. Then Rita comes out and she's in her like foam thing. That wasn't bad. It, no, it, it was, wasn't. She didn't structure the top appropriately enough to be mobile, to do what she needed to do to sell it. You saw she was turning to the side or to the back. You can see all the foam, which we understand. Yeah. You just made this, but at, we want you to try to hide that you just made this as best as possible. And it's easy for us at home drinking wine as we watch television to, to say, be like, like, I would have done this. this. <laughs> but but had I was thinking the whole time, had she like done that and then cut it in half, and then built it so that the top half was kind of coming onto her shoulders. Instead so when she turned of, around, we didn't see instead it. Instead of yeah. this way. yes, agree. Yeah. Agreed, agree. But that is, you know, that's a hindsight thing, so. But I liked her makeup and I liked her hair yes. and I liked that she had the like stuff in front of her eyes. I was into that. Then we had Priyanka Pre. in her corset and paper thing. Okay, I'll let you begin. So I like that when Priyanka heard that Michelle Visage was coming, she said, I, well, I have to do more than glue to a corset now. And then she's, she made, uh, she made paper. <laughs> she tried to make the, it's the skirt, the lining thing that goes underneath. Yeah, so yeah, whatever Make it called. big, oh my Jesus, what's it called? Petticoat, she tried to make a petticoat. Mm. And I also want to point out, okay, there have been now two references to Beyonce that have been so disrespectful. So. The first was when Alona was in her final look, the one she got eliminated on, she had the jewel kind of top. Yes. She said that she was putting Beyonce to shame. Mm -hmm. And so that was not true. I, I um, shut my laptop off when she said that. Not true, not true. And then Priyanka is gluing ornaments to a corset from Amazon. <laughs> And she said she's inspired by Beyonce. Where? As the premier Beyonce host of Chicago, <laughs> I have to say, <laughs> don't do that. Like, I know Beyonce's never gonna watch the show, but like, don't. Don't do that. Don't. Oh, but can I say though, had Pre not had to move at all, I kind of liked it. it. Yes, it was a, it was a stand or an interview look, not, rock the runway possibly performing look because she also tripped on her paper mm -hmm. so we've had all three girls have tripped on their stuff then scarlet comes out she doesn't trip once gives you um, ice warrior princess ho down i appreciated that the judges actually recognized that and they were like you took eleganza to a scarlet bobo place mm -hmm. you didn't do what everyone else did and you didn't trip over your own shit. That was a very clear Scarlet Bobo win. Like Hands when she down. came out, I was like, oh, okay, she won. The, so. yeah, her executive realness was a uh, cinch. Her shivery thing, or her icy walk home was different than so everyone cute. else. Pops of color. Yeah. And then this final one, it was just like, girl, you, you said, I'm taking this one. <laughs> I'm taking this yes. one. Yes, and she did. She took it. Let's move ahead to the judging. I think we've already talked. Do you have any other like judging things you'd like to address? Brooklyn and Jeffrey, they seemed a little more reserved. They definitely, I felt like they were holding back because Michelle was there. Brooklyn was like, yeah. hi, Michelle. Yes, I'm hosting the show in the absence of Rue. Thank you so much. And Jeffrey was, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, is that what you said, Michelle? I agree with Michelle. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, the volume of Jeffrey's laughs at anything Michelle said. We get it, girl. You're nervous. You, you're, you're nervous. You're like, you're nervous. We get it. Then we do my favorite uh, Drag Race uh, 
skit, uh, let's say, <laughs> where they have to talk to pictures of themselves as babies. Mm -hmm. What would you say to young whatever? Now, what I find interesting about that is they're holding up a picture of like, of Rita when she's three years old. Mm -hmm. And they say, what would you say to this little boy? And then Rita's like, I would say change the world, be yourself. <laughs> and I'm like, would you say that to, <laughs> to a, a three-year-old? Three <laughs> I would say, here's a lollipop, don't put it in your butt. And then I just <laughs> move on because they're three. I love that they, I, I do like watching them get emotional. I mean, it is sweet. They have been on a long journey. At that um, point, yeah, they're all ready to quit drag. At the end, they're just yep. like, okay, now your psychiatrist asked you this in the psych test. We're gonna ask you yeah. one more time. Before we send you back to that room that we lock you in at night, talk about your childhood. <laughs> Please and thank you. No, the funniest part to me was that like Priyanka, as she's like trying to explain, you could tell it kind of tripped her up. And she was like, I would just say, just be gay. Be gay. That's, be gay that's all I have to say. <laughs> yeah. And she, and she rhymed, just, be gay. That's all I have to say. And then she treated Brooklyn like shit. She was like, put the picture put down, the picture Brooklyn. Down. <laughs> you wouldn't talk to Rue like that. No. No, 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 no. Then we get into Untucked. Really the funniest part was that Priyanka got drunk. She drank two drinks and she was like Not wasted. Not two drinks. <laughs> Well, they hadn't eaten. They don't drink alcohol a lot there. So like- Oh um, yeah, so I probably didn't... one in there. They're like, mm. If they do bring Canada back, I would love to see a proper Untucked. Uh, I was gonna say with this season, yeah, they could have cause, but no, it would have just been Jimbo reading the girls down. Cause any moment yeah. Untucked, someone came for him. They were not gonna make Jimbo, it. Jimbo, yeah, Untucked for Canada was like Jimbo's own like mental- Breakdown? Like spiral. <laughs> yeah, it was just- <laughs> And even in this one, they're playing. She's like making fun of Priyanka and kind of laughing. But going in. But there's also in. like going in. Like there's a level of like, sister, brush that damn wig, then come talk to me. But no, Jimbo was like this, this, this. Jimbo needed, she needed a vacation. Thank God she got to stay at a Hilton. Um, we find out Scarlett wins. She wins a trip to Vienna. Ba -ba -da! I hope she went before COVID because right now that would suck. Mm -hmm. Although, I don't know, Austria and Canada probably are fine. Just don't come to the States. Right. We will kill you. <laughs> don't come here. Priyanka is safe. Not a surprise. Were you surprised no. that Priyanka was safe? I was no, not. No, I wasn't um, either. But if she was going to lip sync again, I was worried because that third time lip sync is always like the... And I was worried for what she was wearing because I, I could just see her ripping that paper off and, and her tearing a paper. And it and was not going to be a clean, great. yeah, nothing was going to be a clean rip yeah. when it happened. So I'm no. glad, I think production was like, we don't want to clean this up. Walk to the back. Don't step on your shit. Please get out. We had Jimbo and Rita lip sync. What was your impression of the lip sync? <sighs> Underwhelmed. I was glad I got to see Jimbo in the lip sync setting. I'm sad with what he was wearing because I feel like they could not perform to the best of their abilities. Actually, it was evident that they couldn't perform to the best of their abilities because of this. I agree with you. That's what I saw. I saw Jimbo thinking about her headpiece, thinking about not stepping on her dress, like mm -hmm. all the problems she had on the runway walking down. All the she stuff was in. All the stuff you don't yeah. want to think about while you're putting on your performance. It's just like. Well, as like, as you know, Chicago's renowned lip sync artist myself, it's something I wouldn't have done, you know? Um, lip sync? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Girl, I have to lip sync in a couple weeks, so I don't know what's gonna happen. You'll make um, it. I'm not worried about me. I'm worried about the other people who have to watch it. Yeah, Jimbo just looked lost and she looked defeated. Like it just, you could tell she'd kind of given up because Rita, as clunky as it was when she cut her skirt off, she killed it. She knew she could I move. enjoyed it. Yep, and yeah. she kept up. I think Rita, I think Rita is a good lip syncer. I think she delivers this intensity that her drag kind of brings anyway. Agree, I would agree with that. I enjoy it. Jimbo's gone, unfortunately. Oh, wah, wah, Super unfortunately, wah. because he was my choice to win. Honestly, and same here. Jimbo gave me yeah. very um, Sharon Needles narrative when, yes. since this season. And I was just like, this is the next, the next club kid winner, if you will, and drag clown. I, yeah, I just thought, yeah. And so I made a bet with Chan. I've clearly lost. Um, yeah, run, she her bet on money. Priyanka. run her well, that no, money. Run her that money. 
No, she wins. If Priyanka wins, um, I have to do a mukbang with Chan. And Chan, I have to eat whatever Chan gives me. Yes! Oh yeah, my god. I'm really nervous. I won season 12. So it's, you know, we're switching off. We're being okay. nice. You're fair. So Jimbo drops to her knees and she screams, why? Yeah. And then she kind of pouts. Hilarious. Did Thanks you love like. though? Did you did you notice that the judges, like the Canadian judges, were all like clapping and laughing hysterically? Brooklyn was like beating the desk because she was laughing so hard, and Michelle was going. <laughs> Is this what y'all do? Okay. <laughs> yeah, she's like, I don't know, I don't know what's going on. I don't know this person. My favorite part though was when Brooklyn said, "Bye, Jimbo." Jimbo said, "Fuck, Fuck you." you. <laughs> like they are not here for Miss Brooklyn. I, I dare someone to say that to Rue sure. or Michelle on a regular season of Drag oh. Race. Please, somebody. Oh, God. No, I would pay to see that, let's be honest. There you go. So we are moving into the finale. We have our top three. Who is your pick to win? Honestly, uh, let's just keep this train going. Keep this crown on the queens of color, Priyanka. She has been the underdog. Um, people yeah. know that she's a performer. They know she has personality. Yes, we all have slip ups and you saw those throughout this season. But overall, Priyanka is the drag race package, if you will, of Canada. Yeah, she even like when Stacy's doing the walk around, she even they address that. And she's like, I just feel like I've grown so much in this competition, which we love to crown someone who's grown. Like we love to like Jinx Monsoon was a great example of that. Growth. And like, yeah, and just like excelled at the end. And that's where it, what she's doing. Mm -hmm. I also think Priyanka's gonna win. But I have to say, watching Canada's Drag Race, I never agreed with anything that they decided. So it Point. may be Rita. I wouldn't be opposed to Rita or Scarlett winning either. I think they're both viable and exceptional candidates for the crown. I just, I wanted to go to Priyanka and that's just me. I don't think Scarlett is viable. Like I, I love Scarlett, don't get me wrong, but I just, I think she's- She was kinda, too middle of the road. She's ridden the line. I yeah. think it would be anticlimactic to crown her. So I think, I think she's out. Say next week during this finale, excuse me, Scarlett shows up, like brings the look for the finale number, eats Priyanka and Rita Baga up. Is she back in the running? Because we have not seen her perform yet. Oh shit, oh shit. Oh, you're right. We haven't. We've seen All Rita. Right. I'm, I'm pretty sure Rita right. has more right. tricks up her sleeves with the experience in performing that she has. Priyanka, we also know what she can do and I feel like she will give either one of them a run for their money. I mean, who knows? Scarlett could be an incredible lip syncer. If she's not, we'll quickly know, and then we can just move on. Immediately. But <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. Before we go, there's a couple things I just want to quickly go through. We have been giving all of our tips at IMHO The Show on Venmo uh, to various Black Lives Matter organizations and other organizations that really help with the movement. This last couple weeks, actually, every tip that you've given to IMHO The Show has gone to the Louisville Community Bail Fund. With the recent arrests in Louisville and the, the police being police, we just wanted to do all we could to help the people who are fighting for Brianna in Brianna's city. We want to thank you so much. Uh, we're going to show your names right here, right now. Caramel, do you have like a song you could sing while we scroll the names of all the people who've donated? I do, I do. Good. It's, a, it's an old family ditty. It's been in our family for generations. Oh, has um, it? Yes. A <clears throat> Goldport classic? Yes, yes, yes. Goldport classic. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm ready, I'm ready. All right. <clears throat> Oh, say, can you see? Okay, now do it. Now do it like it's cheese on a poutine. Now do it slow. Do it slow. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank no, you. I won't. I won't put them through that. This week, when you give to at IMHO the show on Venmo, it will be going to Glitz. That is G L I T S. Hi, I'm Kyan Dorisho, founder of Glitz Inc. That's gays and lesbians living in a transgender society. I'm doing this video because in the direct response to COVID-19, so many of our community members have passed away. This pandemic has put us in a very bad situation. I'm a sex worker advocate and doing this work as a founder of an agency, I suffer to get funding. 
in the U.S., we are suffering from not having the adequate funding to not only help sex workers, but people affected by HIV, people that are affected by homelessness. What Glitz is doing right now as a frontline agency, we're helping people get out of jail. We're helping people get out of jail and into sustainability with a plan. The U.S. really needs your funding. What we're looking at right now is just a prelude to a very bad case. What's going to happen when COVID is over is the numbers in HIV are going to go up. The numbers in sexual abuse is going to go up. Domestic violence has already gone up. We need your help. There's no other way to say it than me being responsible enough to tell you to please help us. Please help us in ways that make sense. Please donate and be a part. Thank you. Please, I know we keep, every week we ask you to give more money, <laughs> but through our tiny, tiny little show, our stupid show where we talk about a TV show, we have donated thousands of dollars in the last few months, and that's all because of you. So let's keep that momentum going. It's the beginning of the month. If you have a couple dollars after you pay rent. So it might not be a lot, but the impact is amazing. It is amazing. And it's when you give money and it goes to a population that doesn't feel supported, the smallest amount of what you're giving is a support to them. So a dollar, two dollars, it's a, it's a big deal. Also, whenever we have a guest, we love for you to give them a little money too, because I promise you, I'm not going to. So <laughs> Caramel, can you tell people where are you on social media? What is your Venmo? Give us the details. Yes, on Facebook, it's Caramel DeVille. That's K-A-R-A, -A, middle name Mel, M-E-L, and DeVille is D-V-I-L-L-E. -L -L -E. And for all financial and social media platforms, I made it very easy. It's at K-M-D-V-I-L-L-E. K-M-D-V-I-L-L-E. -L -L -E. That's good. And it rhymes, right? <laughs> Yes, yeah, so make sure after you give to Glitz that you give a couple dollars, of course, to Caramel because she's from Mississippi. She's just now working with actual money. So we want her to get used to it. Girl, I know what it's like to move from the South. It's a whole new world it's, up here. It's a monster. You just gotta, you gotta adapt <laughs> and like make it. Fake it till you make it. Truly, truly. All right, well, thank you so much for being here. I love you. Uh, I can't believe that you helped me get on Zoom in 2020. <laughs> it's still something I struggle with. Thank you so much for being here. It means so much that you took time out of your Monday night. Out of my, my busy Monday night. No, darling. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. Thank you to the IMHO fans and to your IMHO team for having me as well. I've only been, what I've only seen none of your videos and I'm just happy to be included in one. So thank you so much. Let's turn this off now. <laughs> Next week is the finale. So Chan, Alexis, and I will be back together. So you get to see all the girls will be back in town. Yes. Uh, so we'll see you. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. Bye, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>
Darby. Darby, 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 Darby. Babe.